to the shipmaster of the Hecarta Corvette, Fayette's Wrath. This is your Kaidon speaking. I have an important mission for you and your task force. With the apparition and her damn guardians enforcing their brutal regime on our world, she has denied us resources needed to our survival, unless we swear fealty to her. Weapons, food, and others. For this reason, we are in need of allies. Allies the apparition has yet to set her terrible gaze upon. She has ensnared many races under her rule, and since the raising of Oth Sonin, they are afraid of losing their own worlds, as the brutes lost Doisak. With that in mind, I am sending you to the far periphery of the fallen Covenant Empire. The Covenant Fringe, a collection of species that were exploited by the Hedge Enemy at the height of its power. While they held little import to the Alliance, their resourcefulness could prove invaluable now in these troubled times. But before you venture out into the unknown, you must know of the Fringe species and of what value they can provide to Vodar, to all of Songhelios. You and your men are still young, and you knew little of these collection of races during the reign of the Prophets. By Urz, even I knew little of many of these races. But with new intelligence given to me by a Yunhead smuggler in my employ, I will share all that I have learned. Moreover, I shall be sending the smuggler to aid you in your mission. He is well adept with the fringe species known to me thus far. You would be wise to welcome his aid on this mission, for the sake of our clans. With that, let us begin. Within the Age of Discovery thousands of cycles ago, the Covenant Empire was vested in the adaptation of all other sentient species that came to our attention. A conversion that came about through the domination of Revelation itself. And, when necessary, conquest. From the mighty Mechalegolo to the small and timid Ungoy, all were brought into the Covenant. They became a part of a great empire that had stretched across the galaxy, enough to rival that of the ancient Forerunners. Amongst the holdings of the Covenant included the Fringe, a collection of civilizations that were held at arm's length by the Empire, exploited mainly for their strategic and infrastructural advantages. These species did not pose any threat to us, and were thus ultimately molded into forced labor or undignified roles, even compared for lesser races within the Covenant fold. Often, they were treated more like tools and instruments rather than constituents within the Hegemony. Most of the Fringe served only on their backwater homeworlds or in remote locations, far outside the purview of high charity and even within the lowest castes, operating under the supervision of a Sanshum executor and local cortege of Kigyar enforcers. With the fall of the Covenant, the fate of many of these desperate species is uncertain. Though some of my fellow Kaidons on the homeworld believe that most will simply pick up where they have left off. The most well-known species within the fringe territories are the Yonhet, a race of scavengers, smugglers, and thieves. A civilization native to the small mood Yonhe, 
the Yonhet are a small and clever biped species that had the talent for acquiring and transporting difficult to find items. When the Covenant initially came into contact with the Yonhet, their lack of a formal military and their meager population ultimately meant that they had little value for membership into the Alliance. But their inherent talents for both trade and artifact hunting proved that they held some merit. And so, under the vigilant eyes of San Shum administrators, the Yonhet were employed to scour abandoned worlds, plumb darkened shrines, and transport recovered relics, among a myriad of other crude tasks. Covenant records indicated that the Yonhet responded to Covenant dogma with a sign of devotion that was never questioned by the San Shum. However, the Yonhet smuggler that will be accompanying you on your mission, Drim, told me that this was but a feigned display, as his people are quite cynical and quite impudent. He has also informed me that after the Covenant reallocated its resources during the War of Annihilation, the Yonhet hid during much of the war, not simply because they held little value as warriors, but also because exploration and transport had become challenging as he put it. As the Covenant's attention had shifted to the war, the Yonhet began dispersing well before the Alliance's collapse. And with the Empire now gone, the Yonhet have taken tentative steps into a larger galactic stage. Bolstered by rapidly increasing opportunities for progress and profit amongst the chaos of the Covenant's fallout, they, much like the Kigyar, have made contracts as salvagers traders, and smugglers. They would often deal with Covenant Warlords and Splinter States, or for Kaidons such as myself. But from what I can tell, interactions between what remains of the Covenant and the Yonhet has varied, with reports of certain Yonhet being lifted within Covenant Splinter Groups, while other reports say that they are being intimidated coerced, or even enslaved. They may lack the military assistance we need, but their salvaging and smuggling talents could prove valuable, as the created are now blockading our world. We could use more weapons and food for our clan folk. Drilm will assist you in dealing with his people. I am told he has many friends on Yonhe. But while the Yonhet were well known to us to merit our attention, from what certain historical records recovered from High Charity's debris field by Drilm can tell us, there is one species that lies within the fringe systems. A species the Prophets went through great lengths to hide from the rest of the Covenant. From what these records can tell, Covenant relic hunters aboard the burgeoning fealty stumbled upon an ocean world called Reem, where they discovered an incredible wealth of foreigner treasures, one of the largest stockpiles ever encountered by the Empire. However, the bulk of this reliquary was contained within networks of sunken foreigner cities all submerged far below the surface of this planetary sea that covered most of this world. Further still, these cities were inhabited by strange aquatic creatures. These aliens are known as the Dazrim. According to the Sanshum reports, this species had repurposed the Forerunner technology in incredible ways creating a vast civilization that thrived within the depths. It is said that they are covered in fine layers of scales in wide ranges of colorations, and that the Dazrim are said to be strong, resourceful, 
and highly intelligent creatures. Although, the Covenant had apparently been unable to penetrate their history or medical science. But eventually, the Sanshu managed to broker an alliance with the Dazrim, leveraging their unique knowledge of Forerunner technologies to... What end? The gods only know. And as time went on, and more species were formally integrated into the Covenant, the Serpent Necks went through great lengths to ensure the knowledge of the Dazrim and their world remained a secret. It is said that they even employed the practice of executing entire crews that accompanied a prophet on a diplomatic trip to this planet. To only a handful were the coordinates known, and even those who simply knew of his existence spoke about it in hushed tones, and far away from the prying eyes of the Songheili. And following the collapse of the Covenant and the scattering of the San Shum, the status of the Das Rim is unclear. Drim will help you in finding this race. The coordinates of Rim have been purged from these records. But for a unit, Drim is quite adept in finding what is lost. If what the prophets claimed about these sirens are true, they could prove to be valuable allies against the apparition and her ilk. Now, within the fringe elements of the Fallen Covenant, no species was spoken about with more dread, fear, and caution than the mighty Sharkoi. Massive in size, these hulking beasts boast an imposing presence that dwarfs even the largest of the Covenant's client races. It is said that the armor of the Mechalagolo was inspired by the indomitable presence of the Sharkoi. Though these were only rumors and whispers, and most were merely dismissed as mere gossip, rarely seen by the highest echelons of military leadership. The Sharkoi were only employed in battle, when necessary, since their presence often resulted in the decimation of their own forces, as well as the enemies. I've reviewed these accounts from a shipmaster who spent a great deal of time in high charity. He claimed that the Hierarchs had a nest of Sharkoi, and intended to use them against the human homeworld of Earth. But, they lacked the means of controlling the beast, and were thus reluctant to use them in battle. And for good reason, for unbeknownst of the Covenant's leadership, the Sharkoi's speed, power, and astonishing resilience, even to the Flood led the Forerunners long ago to attempting to use them as weapons in their war against the Parasite, controlling them through a powerful instrument called a Vertex. At least, that's what the human government claimed, and from what was told to us from Rakoi, or Karo, as the human settlers call it, from the city-state of Rak. Based on the reports from Rak's envoy and former Kaidon, Rajka Kesan, a Jirohanai chieftain came into possession of one such device to control a horde of Sharkoi in some foolish bid for conquest. Fortunately, the former Kaidon, aided by the native human settlers, stopped the chieftain from achieving his terrible ambitions and destroyed the Hive, ensuring a peaceful coexistence between the Sangheili of Rock and the humans of Suraka. From what was described by Kesan, the Sharkoi are enormous bipeds, standing on thick, trunk-like legs, and covered in a gray, leathery skin that spread throughout their cordial muscles with two jagged bone spikes coming out of their hands, which can apparently inflict incredible damage. The Envoy claimed the Sharkoi possess a remarkable bone-shattering grip, 
and bare extruded, razor-like teeth that can maim victims when close enough. And perhaps the most unsettling reports from Rajka state that their prominent lump of bone that dominates their forehead like a cyclopean eye, when in fact, this is but an organ used for echolocation and communication. Although relatively unintelligent as individuals, Sharkoi can collectively pull their cognitive resources as a single fighting entity, an aspect that makes them truly devastating. I thought them to be only myth and legend, but Rajka Kesan is no liar, nor is he a fool. If you encounter these creatures on your travels, do not engage them. Avoid contact with them at all times. The humans claim the Sharkoi can decimate over 50 men. I need not emphasize the devastation these beasts can rot in greater numbers. They can be formidable foes against the apparition, but I do not wish to see our keeps decimated as well. Now, you have your orders, Shipmaster. Travel to the fringe systems with all speed, and find as many allies as possible. We need all the help we can to combat the created in any way we can, as well as keeping our clansfolk fed. Drilm will aid you in your mission as best he can. The Gex I am paying him will ensure that. It is no secret that you are wary of his race, but you will need him to establish a dialect with the vast races that dwell within this unknown region. Now go! The fate of our state, of our very homeworld, is at stake. May Urs shine upon your mission. This is Kaidon Nakai Vodar. End transmission. <laughs>